Okay, everybody. I have something really cool to tell you about. If you haven't heard yet about Anchor, it's the easiest way to make a podcast. Let me explain here. It's free. There are creation tools that allow you to record and edit your podcast right from your phone or computer. Anchor will uh, distribute your podcast for you so it can be heard on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, and more. You can make money from your podcast with no minimum listenership. It's everything you need to make a podcast in one single place. Now, the way that you can do this is you got to download the free Anchor app or go to anchor.fm and then you can get started. It's really fun. We just switched over recently here at All Too Real 2 and I'm enjoying it so far. So be sure to check it out and uh, let us know what you think. Okay, everybody. Welcome to the latest episode of All Too Real 2. My name is Michael E. Cullen II, and with me, as always, via Zoom, is... Matthew Bueller. Okay. Mm-hmm. Good name. Good name. Got yep. a... so, so, Matt, I got a kind of a statement question for you here. Question statement. It's a new, yeah. new new phrase I come up with. Okay. So, so okay. Here's the thing. You know, life moves pretty fast. If you don't stop and look around once in a while, you could miss that they made a TV series based on Ferris Bueller's Day Off. <laughs> in 1990. Thank, that's good to know. Yeah. So, anyways. Um... The, uh, today, in our latest adventure into the, uh, into the air of the pilot <laughs> error, <laughs> where we take a look at, um, the pilots of television series that lasted one season or less. Today we take a look at the 1990 television series, Ferris Bueller. Based on the 1986 John Hughes film Ferris Bueller's Day Off, um, it's a half-hour sitcom developed by John Messias, who uh, is credited for creating "Touched by an Angel." Wow, Providence. And Hawthorne. Not familiar with Hawthorne. Yeah. I think I remember Providence. Yeah. <clears throat> Touched by an Angel. He won two writing Emmy Awards for the drama Saint Elsewhere. Hmm. He also received a Writers Guild Award and Humanitas Prize for his writing on Saint Elsewhere. He also received the Humanitas Prize for his writing on the series Brooklyn Bridge. He wow. also he was a creator of St. Elsewhere um, Touched by an Angel he worked on L.A. Law which comes into play in this episode um, 
He uh, <laughs> was creator of The Single Guy, The Visitor, Dead Like Me. Yeah. Wow. I liked Dead Like Me. That was a good show. Did you ever see that show? No. It's a good show. Check it out, folks. Check it out. <laughs> wow. That was my recommendation. Get off this. Yeah. And he created Ferris Bueller, the TV <laughs> series, not the character. Um, yeah. So, we have a pilot that stars Charlie Schlatter as Ferris Bueller, Richard Reilly, who's my Facebook friend, who will be on a future episode, hopefully, um, as Principal <laughs> Ed Rooney, Sam Freed as Bill, Bu- Bill Bueller, Jennifer Aniston, you know, prior to uh, Friends, as Jeannie mm-hmm. Bueller, Amy Dolans, the daughter of Mickey Dolans from The Monkees, as Sloane Peterson, Brandon Douglas as Cameron Fry, and Judith Kahan as Grace. Um, yeah. So, what happened in this pilot here, Matt? <laughs> um, wow. Okay, so, this is one of the most meta TV show episodes I've seen in my life, and I don't even think that was even a concept, really, at that time, and I don't think it was intentional at all. But, so it starts off with Ferris waking up, and he's talking to the camera, just like in the movie. And then he pulls out a cardboard cutout of Matthew Broderick and says that he didn't like the fact that they cast him to play Fer- Ferris, the real Ferris, which is the TV show Ferris, you know, as the lead role. Because apparently they made a movie about his life, even though he's only 16 years old, because of his antics at a high school, I, I, I guess. Okay, and then, um, and then he takes a chainsaw and cuts his head off. Cardboard, you know, Matthew Broderick cardboard cut off. Car cut out, cuts his head off from the shoulder down. He's like, "Yeah, that's better," or whatever. And it's like, okay, uh, so this is so this is the real Ferris Bueller, the TV show. The the movie Ferris Bueller is about him. But as we find out in the show, that movie must have taken place in at least two years or one year in the future than what the show is. So now time travel is involved in the show, which just makes it even more meta. So they like the legends of cast, the legends of tomorrow get involved somehow and they end up messing up time or Barry Allen, as you pointed out last night. Yeah. You know, did he do something by creating Flashpoint and then he messed up with the timeline? Or was it Wanda from WandaVision? Did she end up fucking with reality so much that she created this sort of alternate world where the TV show... Fit? Anyway, so, because in the movie, Sloane is already his girlfriend and they're seniors in high school at this point. And in this, in this show... She's a new transfer to the high school that he she, he doesn't even know her, but he says, and we're going to fall in love. So you're sitting there thinking, okay, well, is it just because he really he sees like some cute girl that he wants to date or whatever, or has he seen the movie? I mean, he has seen the movie, but does he know the movie takes place in the future, and he already knows what's going to happen, so he knows or, that, or maybe this is Sloan maybe this is gonna, maybe this is future Ferris narrating the show. But somehow inhabiting the body of whoa. younger younger Ferris. Whoa! So, oh my God! So it's even more meta. So yeah. So this could have been, this could have been, but he looks different than Matthew. I mean, Matthew. Yeah. So, 
So yeah, this could have been like bears from a year or two in the future being sent back <clears throat> to this timeline, but then that but then that creates a time loop then because that means that he future Ferris had would have already existed to begin with in order to go back in time in order to create the events that would then lead to the movie, which would then lead to him knowing that he's going to be with Sloan. So then it just it just goes like that in a in a sort of eternal circle. Okay, wow. So this is getting really interesting. So anyway, apparently he's like a computer hacker. Like like all these movies, like apparently these teenagers just know everything about computers somehow and like they just use their like DOS bullshit. That's a really old reference for anyone who's like younger than like forty eight thousand years old. Mm-hmm. Um like, you know, DOS, you know, that was that was like old computer shit right there. Or DOS and he as just people um, call it too. <laughs> is that what it's called DOS? Like, yeah. I, I always call it DOS because I thought Well yeah. that it's, okay, it's well, yeah, DOS yeah, or, yeah. yeah. It, it it is that's the proper thing what you're calling it, but other people refer to it as DOS. <clears throat> DOS. So what does it stand for? DOS is it like um, stand for something or um, something like, operating system. I don't know what. The, oh, okay. I don't know what the D yeah, is. Yeah. Disk probably disk operating system. Something. Probably. <clears throat> okay. Anyway, yeah. So he's somehow able to. Um, like he he puts up a picture of Sloan as the new transfer. Again, this is 1990, so it's not like um, you could just easily do something like that. And uh, and he uh, decides to go down to um, for breakfast or whatever. His sister is complaining that he's making a bunch of noise or whatever. Oh, that, that was when he was cutting Matthew Broderick's head off with a chainsaw, and then she's trying to like you know, do her eyebrows or whatever. And then we go downstairs and the parents are completely different. They act completely, I mean, different personalities completely. Um, you know, his mom is like this doting kind of parental figure and his dad's kind of just has his face buried in the it's newspaper. Basically obliv- before phone. Ob- oblivious um, to the world. Yeah. And then she makes her put the paper down and she's like, you have any fatherly advice? By the way, this whole episode has like tons of really stupid jokes that don't make any sense or have any context. So he puts down a paper and he's like, son, make sure never to invade Russia in the winter. And, and Ferris is like, okay, I'll have to reschedule. Like, what? <laughs> okay. Um, like, it doesn't make any sense. Like, there's no context to it. Like, and then uh, Jenny, or Jeannie comes down. And, uh, by the way, she plays older, his older sister in the show. But which which makes movie. sense makes sense for a TV show, because in, the TV, in, in yeah. a TV show, it would make more sense um, for her to be older, because you don't want the older brother basically bullying the younger sister. <laughs> right. <laughs> True. <laughs> yeah, okay. Yeah. That makes sense. Yeah. Um, so they kind of have this back and forth. Ferris charms both his parents, and then they go to work. And then Jeannie's like, "You may have, you know, pulled pull the wool over their eyes, but you know, I see through you, or whatever type of thing." And she's like, "All right, ground rules about high school, or whatever. Nobody knows we're you no, know, we we are related. Nobody, you know, don't talk to me." Which is weird because he's 16 years old, which means that they already would have been at high school for a while so why would she be telling him this for his third year of high school we don't know each other like it's, it's, that, that would seem like that would be something you would say like when on, someone's just getting into high school you know what i mean like some see, my, my theory on this is is like sometimes some school systems the way that they're set up freshman and sophomore school are is a different school than junior and senior Oh, okay. Yeah, there was a lot. Like, I remember seeing that in movies and TV shows back then. So that's my theory, huh. is that maybe, maybe it's like, because there's like, there's like a junior high school and a senior high school. And I know that junior high, we think of seventh and eighth grade in the Midwest. Mm-hmm. But I think a lot of times that was considered middle school out there. 
and then you had junior high and senior high, which were <laughs> okay, like freshmen and not to be confused with junior year of high school. So it you know just to make things more confusing, s- some school districts run things differently. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> They yeah, have the right, s- well, same number of years, okay. but the way that they're split up is different. So that that I'm just giving them the benefit of the doubt. Either that, or it was just a fucked up writing. Right. I mean, it could have been like that in Santa Monica too, because I know in my school, it was seven in eighth grade was junior high, but then right after, <clears throat> excuse me, no, no, sorry, it was um. So when I was in seventh grade, it was seventh and eighth grade, but then. When I was in eighth grade, they moved sixth grade into junior high. Oh, okay. So then, and I was pissed off about that because I'm like, I don't want sixth graders, eh, you know, whatever, you know, little kids, you know, type of thing. But, um, yeah, okay. So, so yeah, she does this whole thing where, you know, and, you know, she's like, I'm not going to drive you around or whatever. And then it turns out that he ordered a limousine to pick him up to go to school for some reason. And, uh, and then he picks up. Anyway, well, I don't want to say the whole, I don't want to do the whole thing. So what okay. else happened? So he picks up he picks up Cameron, his best friend, played in uh, this show by Brandon Douglas. Um, by the way, his mom is played by Christine Rose, who um, I've been watching a lot of How I Met Your Mother lately, and she plays Ted's mom on that show. Hmm. So, yeah, just just an interesting side fact. Um, <laughs> um, trying to remember exactly what happens next. Um, they, um, he goes to, he, he, he's on his way to school, he's running late. There's a, there's a, um, like, school announcement meeting sort of thing out in the, like, outside of the school <laughs> that uh, Mr. Rooney is having. And uh, Ferris shows up late. Um, Mr. Rooney, by the way, played by, and I'm not saying that just because we're Facebook friends, but Richard Reilly is probably the best part of this whole show. Oh, yeah, definitely. In, in like, every episode, honestly. Um, because I... I didn't watch every episode, but I remember watching it when it was on, and then when they reran it on, like, TV Land or something years later. Um, <laughs> I used to watch it on there, too. Um, I actually enjoyed the show, and I do think, I mean, this is, okay, this pilot is not a good pilot. I think the show got better <laughs> when it kind of became its own thing. <laughs> as it went on, but it only lasted 13 episodes, and then it had the... Uh, Oh. It, it 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 also had the uh, the bad misfortune of coming out at the same time as Parker Lewis can't lose the TV show, which was basically like a Ferris Bueller clone, but done written better, <laughs> in my opinion. Um, yeah. And then you also had of this era, you had your Zach Morris coming out around that time too, which was basically a Ferris Bueller clone, and um, <laughs> you know. So, mm-hmm. so, so you kind of had your, you already had your Ferris Bueller's. You didn't really need Ferris Bueller, you know. Yeah. So makes um, sense. Yeah. And plus, two, they had an episode. I didn't watch it, but they had an episode called like Ferris Bueller can't win or something like that. Yeah. In the, you know, so that's like another aspect of how meta this show was mm-hmm. without them really even like knowing what that was or anything. Yeah. That was before the word meta was kind of even coined, I think. Um, yeah. yeah. So, so while uh, while Rooney's on stage giving his uh, his speech, Ferris shows up and he's got this uh, remote control that Rooney ends up sinking on stage because he he like makes a tra- he has a trap door <laughs> or something on the stage. So you know, hilarity ensues. <laughs> <laughs> like it does. Bueller! Yeah. <laughs> and, oh yeah, we, we forgot the, 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 I don't know when it was, but the, the opening credits <laughs> are some of the most 1990 opening credits ever made. Um, It's just, like, 
Bueller with a bunch of like words walking around, you know, in a white void for most of it. And the music, <laughs> the music is all like synthesizer sounds, like like the one scene in the movie where he used a synthesizer to like create weird sounds of like coughing and all this other shit. They somebody thought, hey. <laughs> let's uh let's score the whole TV show like that. Yep. It's it's the whole throwaway line or the throwaway scene becomes like, you know, a major part of the show or whatever. Yeah. God, that music was bad. Like, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like, it's like the Ferris. Was so... <laughs> yeah, Ferris. Ferris. Bueller. <laughs> God. And, and like it, it, it's sad though it gets stuck in your head though well i know it's i'm still thinking about it now it's pissing me off but um it also too like throughout the whole episode like it would just out of nowhere would just go Bueller! like like okay like we know who he is like you know uh do you want to take a quick break here matt and we'll talk more about the rest of the episode yeah sure okay we'll be right back folks It's the ninja from the Ask the Angry Ninja Show saying, come listen to the show. We got the ninja wife to give you movie reviews. We got the conscript to give you the ninja news. And we got the battle to talk about your sports. And as always, it is the Ask the Angry Ninja Show. So ask me a question. We'll give you the ninja knowledge you need for your ninja life. Search for us anywhere you get your podcast from. Just search for the Ask the Angry Ninja Show and enjoy the show. And we are back. Okay. All right. So, um, folks, Ferris Bueller. Good boxing. Yes. Yeah. The TV show. The pilot. Yep. So, so what happens yep. next? Next here, Matthew. Uh, next is, you know, after you know Rooney falls through the hole or whatever. Um, apparently, Ferris like has like the hookup for like literally everything in the world, which is kind of interesting. Like, I don't know how. I mean, they kind of touched on this in the movie a little bit, but like, no, like he, like he apparently can like give parking to anyone that wants to park their vehicle in like the teacher's area, which is okay. And then these two girls are complaining about having macaroni and cheese for lunch on Thursday. So then he somehow arranges, um, linguine and pesto, like by making a phone call, like, okay. And they're like, Oh cool. What's pesto. And it's like, okay. And then, um, Cameron, all the while is like, you know, Ro- Rooney, Rooney's got a tight, you know, tight eye on the, you know, teacher's parking or whatever. And, oh, you're going to mess up his favorite meal or whatever. I don't know. And like, so then he also, oh, by the way, too. So before they even went to school, um, uh, Ferris with his magical hacking skills again with this computer inside the car, um, was able to, uh, basically removed Cameron from gym class because he didn't want to be in gym. And uh, so, he, you know, he's then he scheduled himself to be in all the same classes as Sloan. And it's like, wow, like he's got some pretty advanced, you know, hacking skills that nobody's like detecting at all. Like, <laughs> so then he basically, again, so like he knows they're going to fall in love because he's seen, he's seen his future played by Matthew Broderick, which he didn't, didn't like. So he already, already knows. So my theory about this, again, to kind of go back to the <clears throat> the time travel aspect of this whole um, TV show, is that the reason why Ferris is so confident is that he already knows his future. So he already knows what's going to work out and what's not going to work out. And perhaps he, he even he's even seen his own demise. So we kind of got like a big fish kind of element going on here too. So like, um, he's just not afraid of anything. He just knows everything's going to work out. Okay. So he, he schedules himself 
to be in all of Sloane's classes, and he's, like, trying to get her attention in the Latin class in a really weird, creepy way where he's, like, literally just, like, facing her and, like, talking to her. And she's just, like, staring at, like, the chalkboard, like, not paying attention to him or whatever. And then, like, every single class, and I mean every single class, he, like, says something really stupid that he thinks is funny. Which, again, is interesting because it's like, if you've already seen your future, what do you, you know, like, what jokes land and what jokes don't land? Or are you just not privy to that knowledge of the future? Like, you're only privy to, like, be basic things, but not, like, full-on details? I don't know. But anyway, the jokes are stupid. And then he always ends the joke by, by the way, did you know my name is Ferris Bueller? It's like, mm, yeah, I'm pretty sure by, like, the seventh class of the day, uh, she knows who your fucking name is, okay? Shut the fuck up. Like, she hasn't said any... No, notice him about that. Okay, so he schedules to be in all of her classes, but how does he automatically get to be her lab partner in every single one of these classes? Like, how does that work out? Like, teachers usually assign... Uh, you know, it's not like you just get to pick every single class. Whatever. Okay. <laughs> Maybe I'm re- reading too much into Probably class, reading too much into it. it. <laughs> yeah. No, no. The show was meta before meta was a thing, and everything they did was was pre thought out. So I'm, I'm I'm taking them to to task for this. So um, <clears throat> so they're doing like this weird like driving ed course where they're like in like a fake car with like a TV screen. And they're supposed to be, like, pretending to drive, I guess. I don't know. Really, really advanced school for, like, 1990. But, hey, I guess there's only the best for Ferris and Santa Monica. Oh, yeah. To bring to that point, hmm, Ferris Bueller's Day Off TV, uh, movie takes place in Chicago. Yeah, it was basically a now, love letter to the city, too, because it was so, you know, it's such a Chicago movie. It's yeah, not like, it is. Yeah. I mean... Yeah, I mean, it really is. I mean, like... It, and there, they, they... there was no reason whatsoever to set the show in Santa Monica, except oh. for the fact that we have a scene coming up at a beach. That's it. That's it, literally. And it's, no, it's not an important scene whatsoever. And there was one scene earlier when they were picking up camera and they showed the, the beach a little bit. But, um... Because, again, so he picks... Another thing about that. So he picks up Cameron just, like, standing on the street somewhere... Not, not anywhere near a residential neighborhood. So it's like, so Cameron has to, like, walk, meet you halfway for him to pick him up with the limousine? Like, that's a weird, okay, whatever. Uh, that's a weird thing to do. But, okay, so that's what he did. And then um, they, they fail the driving thing or whatever. They get into, like, a fake accident or whatever. And then he's like, oh, we should eat lunch together or something, some bullshit. I don't know. And then, like, finally... But before this time, Sloan never even talked once. Like, she literally just, like, would, like, shake her head or just, like, ignore him, which was the better response, really. Mm-hmm. And just completely ignored this fucking idiot. So, um, and she's like, um, you know, who has the car or whatever? You or the, the, or the dummy? So, like, okay, that's a pretty shallow person right there. Um, yep. Which, you know, she wasn't like that movie. But in the show, she's apparently, that's another thing, too. So, like, not only does she look nothing like the actress who played Sloane in the movie, her personality is completely different, not even close to being accurate. Yeah, like, like Sloane Slo- 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 is a little, little bit. Yeah, Sloane in the movie was like a like a strong woman. I mean, mm-hmm. for the time, maybe not, you know, like modern yeah. day strong, but 80s strong movie-wise, you know what I mean? Yeah. But yeah, this this character, at least in the pilot, I mean... Like I said, the show might, I, I thought the show got better as it went on, but I haven't seen the other episodes in probably 15 years or more, you know? So <laughs> it's like, at least, so it's hard to say. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah I'll be sure to check it out, actually, because I'm, I'm actually kind of morbidly interested in how to see how the show goes. Yes, me too. <laughs> so I might actually check, maybe, maybe we can do like, do another episode about. Like if it gets better or not, or well, something yeah, like maybe that. we'll revisit this or something, or if we yeah. ever have Richard Reilly on the show, we can talk to him about it a little bit. Um, yeah, the uh, yeah, be- the um, the whole. I, I mean, 
the whole show didn't last even a whole season. But if you want to watch the whole show, some somebody was kind enough to upload every episode to YouTube. Mm-hmm. I I think there might be there might even be like a DVD release of this too though. So oh you wow! Know, so you might want to if you want to do it legally, you might even want to buy that. I don't know. You know? <laughs> yeah. If, if you really like Ferris Bueller, I don't yeah, know. If you're or, or if you really sp- hate Ferris Bueller, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, you could hate watch it too, I yeah. guess. Um, <clears throat> cause, you know, that's what I was doing pretty much. Um, so they go to the beach on their little beach date or whatever to cut class. And she's kind of nervous cause she's never, <clears throat> she's never cut class. Oh yeah, she said she used to go to a parochial school, which again seems like totally out of character for Sloan, but whatever. <clears throat> and, um, so she's used to like, you know, kind of strict. Parochial schools are kind of like, are they kind of like religious schools? Like Montessori, yeah. well, Montessori is not really religious. Well, parochial, like, parochial just means like a non-public school. Um, okay. Yeah, like some kind of fancy school or something. It could be a Catholic school. It could be a, you know, uh, some kind of, you know, Montessori school or, you know, whatever, something like that, you know, whatever it is. Mm-hmm. Hard to say. <clears throat> yeah, because I went to Montessori school for one I think it wasn't even a full year. I think it was just six months. But, like, I, I still remember shit from that. And I was, like, that was preschool for me. That wasn't even kindergarten. So, like, their methods must really work that for, like, a mere six-month stint when I was four years old. And I still remember, like, some of their, like, methods and shit like that. So it's, like, very interesting. But, uh, I, I mean, to, don't, don't, don't... I went to Catholic school for uh, 13 years, so... Mm-hmm. Well, thirteen and a half technically, because I did take a half a semester of a Catholic college too. So, um, <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah, I mean a half a year, not a half a semester, but yeah. Yep, half so, a semester. Yeah, no. <laughs> might as well have because I failed out. But anyways, um, no. <laughs> <clears throat> oh, my life sucks. Yeah. Well, now we're now. I wasn't yeah, able. I wasn't able to hack into the system and make everything better. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You didn't have the the hacking skills of TV Ferris, you know, which is DOS bullshit and whatever. Anyway, so right, and I didn't have a sound, <clears throat> soundtrack she, following me around all the time to remind me of my name. Exactly, Colin. <laughs> Michael, With Colin. A, <laughs> no, I can do that from now on. I can just show up to like. Your work and stuff with like a keyboard and just like play go 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 in, go in. I'm thinking that would get annoying after a while. Just just yeah, probably. <laughs> I probably get kicked out too. Yeah. But, uh, <laughs> uh, so they they do their dumb beach date or whatever, and uh, she's like, "I want to be a, a ballet or something. I don't know what dance like some kind of dancer or some bullshit." Yeah. I mean, that's not bullshit, but whatever. Um, and then she, like, runs off, and then she falls in the sand, and he's like, what, what, what does she have to lose? Well, besides her balance. Then he calls her a wench, I guess, I think. But in, like, a loving uh, way. I guess, yeah. And it's like, okay. So then they go back to school, and then... Um, Rooney is like there waiting. Oh yeah, the reason why Rooney knows. Okay, I'm getting a little the narration. The, the I'm getting the timeline fucked up here. But then again, it's the okay. whole timeline of the show is fucked up because of the time travel aspect. <clears throat> um, so uh, Rooney knows that he's gone because he stole his sister's car <clears throat> to go to the beach. Yeah, and, and, and then Genie Genie like reported that it was stolen. At the same time, and then Ro- Rooney writes her up for being out of class. <clears throat> right, yeah, he's really strict, because he, he wrote her up for being late as well. <clears throat> oh yeah, that's, that's the other weird joke. I don't know if this was like a... I, I don't know if this was meant to be like a sexual joke, or if it... I, I don't know. If it was just one of those weird jokes that didn't make any sense, because there's no context to it. But he, he said that you're, you're late, and writes a slip. And he's like, you know what that means? And she says, yeah, I won't go to heaven. So I don't know if that was like, you know, like late, like if she's pregnant. I I, I don't know. I don't know what that meant. Yeah. Like, you know, I, I my my mind didn't even go there. I just thought it was a badly written line. 
Well, I was just thinking because, you know, if you're late, you're a teenager, yeah. you got pregnant, most likely that you're not married. Yeah. So therefore, you're not going there. I don't, maybe I'm reading way too into this. I don't know. Like I said, <laughs> but I, I don't know. So anyway, oh yeah. So, so um, okay. This is the cool. This is like a really meta part comes up here. Like this whole episode is just full of these like weird meta moments. Like again, I don't even think they even knew they were doing it, or if it was even a concept back then. So they got the dude who played in L.A. Law. Um, Ferris basically. I, I guess the guy owes him a favor or whatever because, again, Ferris has the hookup even for, like, middle-aged adults at this point, which is kind of questionable. Okay. Yeah, he has Alan, um, Alan Rations, who was a, one of the lawyers on uh, on uh, L.A. Law at the time, which was, like, one yeah. of the top-rated television shows at that time. And, you know, it makes sense because, like, the guy that created this for television wrote on L.A. Law, so it makes sense that he would have the hookup. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it does, yeah. And so he basically has this guy pretend to be a lawyer to, to Rooney um, and just threatens all these lawsuits and all this crap or whatever and then basically talked him down to just, like, you know, detention or whatever. Yeah. And, um, and like, the Grace even, like, mentioned, like, she actually thinks that he's, like, the the lawyer from the show, I think, or something. Yeah. Is that true, or I think so? And he's like, "I'm not really, yeah, I'm not <clears throat> really whatever, you know." So, so, so that's that's like really, that's like really meta. I mean, that mm-hmm. really is like that was. I mean, I I don't remember much. I was just a little kid when that show was on, so I don't remember watched it that much. Maybe my parents did or something. I don't know. But um, so that was kind of funny. That was pretty cool. And then um, so then I forgot what else happens. Um. Some bullshit where his sister has to go to detention. To yeah, she's to... in detention as well. Um, she shows up to the detention. Ferris isn't there. He put one, that dummy from the uh, from the driving scene <clears throat> in his seat, right? And somehow nobody bothered to check the front of the person to see if it was <clears throat> real, right? Which, Wait, yeah. no, I got the timeline now. So that was when he stole the card, though, wasn't it? Yeah. So he was supposed to be in attention before. Okay, so what was the, what was the the lawyer for? What was that? No, for that that, that he... was a, that was after. I think I thought. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. That was after he stole the card. <coughs> yeah. Okay. Okay. So he just didn't show up to detention, I guess. Okay, and then and um... when uh, when but when back when Rooney uh, found them, uh, Sloan basically was the reason she ratted him out. Um, okay, yeah. Yeah, right. and, uh, and then later on in the episode, she talks about how she wants to, you know, like you said, go to ballet school and stuff. So she basically is talking about transferring again. Oh, yeah, okay, that's right, yeah. <clears throat> Which probably, oh, okay, probably yeah, yeah. sets no, up, probably sets up the plot of, like, the, of a future episode of Ferris basically trying to, oh, yeah. you know, um, gaslight her into staying at the school or something. Um, yeah, actually, I think he does worse than that. I think he actually, I, I think I read that he actually makes it, like, he does his stupid computer bullshit again, and actually makes it so she can't transfer, like, until, like, three months later. So, yeah, so, like, he's a very manipulative person. Yeah. Which is, again, so apparently Matthew Broderick, Ferris Bueller, was a much nicer person. Mm-hmm. But then again, so if it does take place, like, two years in the future, maybe he changes his ways within that two years. And maybe the family moves to Chicago. So maybe that's why maybe, but then Cameron and Sloan also moved. That's kind of, and Mr. Rooney like by the bell type of thing. And Mr. Rooney, yeah, like Mr. Yeah. Bell. Did. The by the bell. Yep. <laughs> yeah, exactly. The whole town just moves to California, Bayside, California. It's, it's, it's like the opposite of the Miss Bliss like, okay. saved by the bell thing, because in the Miss Bliss thing, they move from the Midwest to California, and this will move from California to the Midwest. So, um, <laughs> Yeah, yeah. But, you know, Chicago is a mm-hmm. cool city. I mean, be better. I mean, it, that's better than moving. So an- another like interesting LA thing, like I, small I oh. another interesting thing, too, that I noticed about this is that uh, this show premiered the same night as Fresh Prince of Bel-Air. Oh, geez. Right after it. So you have this show about, uh, you know, a kind of scheming kid moving to California. Right. 
And, uh, you know, which is basically a kind of a Ferris Bueller put into a rich mansion in Beverly Hills sort of situation. You know what I mean? Yeah. So you have another Ferris Bueller prototype here with with Will Smith's character. And (laughs) it's like, okay, you kind of, you know, you're oversaturating the market because you've already got... You've already got Saturday mornings with your Saved by the Bell, and you got this all on NBC, and then over right. on, then over on Fox, you've got Parker Lewis, and I'm sure there were other like scheming kids on TV too. So it's like you're watering down the market there, you know? Yeah, and yeah, the show didn't have a chance um, the following <laughs> Fresh Prince. I mean, yeah. <laughs> Which which nobody knew was going to be a big hit, God. but you know, right? And that's probably why I remember this show because I remember being excited to watch The Fresh Prince because I was a big fan of uh, DJ Jazzy Jeff and The Fresh Prince. So right. prior to this, so because I was probably like twelve or so when this show came out, so you know, so yeah, yeah. <clears throat> I don't know. Yep. So yep. on twelve or thirteen, somewhere around there. Um, yeah. So, so so how's the show end? How's the episode end? Uh, the episode ends with um, I don't know some bullshit where he comes home and then he's like trying to you know sweet talk his mom again or whatever. Or, like I was like, where were you? Oh, I was. I was helping out at the orphanage, but then oh, yeah, you brought you know, I had time to get you some. Yeah, and she's like, "Oh, Ferris, I'm like, come on, like, really, like, yeah." He was at the orphanage for like what two seconds after school ended. Well, like, no, okay. like he was at he was in what detention. He, he was in detention, so that that was basically him trying to explain where he was. Oh, okay. Yeah. But he even even wasn't really there. <laughs> oh, yeah, either, yeah. So okay. yeah, but um, I don't know. Right, so. Yeah, that makes sense. All right, so um, so then um, Jennifer Aniston or Jeannie rather, she's driving home, and then the cop pulls her over, and you know says that the vehicle has been reported as stolen, and she's like, "Well, I'm the one that you know reported it as stolen." And he's like, "Oh, that's very convenient. You know, can you show me your license and registration?" And then apparently, it's not in her glove compartment, which again is such a weird phrase glove compartment like why why would why would you have a separate thing just for gloves like i I never understood that like you could put other stuff in there why gloves i don't know we'll we'll look into that we'll we'll, after the break i'll I'll explain to why it was because i i I, 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 I personally know but we'll we'll get into that after we get past this and okay cool yeah yeah, if we get past this, yeah, <laughs> like, yeah, we just need to get past this. Um, so, so she, she's like, oh, wait a minute, are you like, you know, doing, you know, like, she's like been, her brother's been conspiring all day, so she's like paranoid now, thinking that like this is one of Ferris's new tricks or whatever. So then she just speeds off, and then you know, so she's like evading arrest now or whatever. So then she gets caught. And now she's in jail, and uh, you know the bail is posted at two hundred and fifty dollars. And then Ferris, being the good younger brother that he is, magically does his computer hacking skills again to have the bail posted at two hundred and fifty thousand dollars. Which again, how is nobody detecting this? Like, I mean, like there had if there was hackers back then, there had to have been people who were working against the hackers as well. There's always, I mean, every time there's criminals, there's always people who are trying to catch the criminals. So how, how is no one seeing any of the stuff changing? Like, whatever. And then and then he cracks some stupid joke about like, oh, because his mom says, oh, well, dinner, dinner's in the microwave. We got to go to the police station to pick up your sister. And he's like, uh, Remember to stop by the bank first or whatever, you know, because it's two hundred fifty. Because he only had two hundred fifty thousand dollars. <laughs> that was so funny. That was so out. funny. Oh, wait. <laughs> yeah, fucking <laughs> a loser. Anyway, so oh yeah, too another joke he said earlier, which was so oh my god, I hate that. I wanted to slap him across the face. So like when 
the LA law guy leaves, he's like, he goes, um, you know, just try to keep your nose clean. And then he goes, I'm not sure if that's an expression or if I really need a Kleenex. I'm like, mm, my God. Um, yeah. Yep. Yep. yep that's yep. the end. That, that's, that's, that's it. That's the pilot. It, it, it also makes me, uh, wonder, I don't know if maybe there was a, maybe there was a, uh, a, a storyline on LA law at that point where his character was doing cocaine or something. He may be. Yeah, that's where I, that's where my mind went. But you know, looking too much into a TV show. Anyways, so uh, do you want to want to take another break and we'll we'll read some reviews and some trivia and stuff, and also talk about glove compartments. <laughs> sure. We'll be right back after this break, folks. What is Gen X? What is the silent generation? What do generations have in common? Hi, I'm Trish the Dish from the Gen X Voice Podcast, and I invite you to listen to conversations I have with folks from different generations, backgrounds, beliefs, and experiences in an attempt to see what connects rather than divides us. Even though Gen X has been called slackers, Karens, or not mentioned at all in some cases, we are the bridge generation, so I feel compelled to do my part to destroy ageism by bringing all these voices together. And, as a bonus, each guest gets to answer some 80s questions at the end of each show. So download and listen to Gen X Voice today on Apple, Spotify, Amazon, or wherever you listen to podcasts, and let's see how much we have in common after all. We are back to all two um, car terms, and um, <laughs> so glove compartments, people, are uh, yeah. a glove compartment or glove box or glovey is a compartment built into the dashboard of an automobile located over the front seat passenger's uh, footwell and often used for miscellaneous storage. The name derives from the original purpose of the compartment to store driving gloves. Here's a little history, folks. Driving gloves were considered necessary equipment in early cars, many of which lacked a hard top to prevent the cooling effect of fast-moving air from numbing the driver's hands. So they needed gloves. Gloves are still considered necessary driving equipment on motorcycles for the same reason. Although, unlike cars, most motorcycles do not have glove boxes. Mm. So there you go. Wow, okay. There's a little history, that's, that's, folks. Yeah, that's really interesting. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yep. <clears throat> and that's all from Wikipedia, folks. You could have looked that up yourselves. But I did it for you. <laughs> yep. And I'm all to car speak or... Yes, we're gonna we're, we're gonna talk about cars because we know everything about them, right, Matt? And, yeah, we'll be the don't, new don't we'll, for we'll be the new click and clack. You ever listen to them <laughs> on the radio back in the day? Yeah, I think. So. Yeah. I used to, I used to love listening to them for some reason. My uh, my mom's husband like loved listening to them, and so we would be driving the car on weekends, listening to them on the way home from work and stuff. Good times, good times. So, <laughs> good time. Yep. Um, <laughs> so, uh, here's a little bit of Ferris Bueller trivia. You ready? Yeah. Okay, um, we have. Differences from the movie. Genie's name is spelled with two N's in the TV series, but only one in the movie. Sloane's name is spelled with an E in the movie, but not on the TV show. Katie and Tom Bueller are the names of the parents in the movie, but on the TV show they're Barbara and Bill. Um, Grace has a crush on Mr. Rooney in the TV series. Um, Sloan is not always wrapped around Ferris's finger 
and has to be won on occasion. So in the show, I guess they break up from time to time. Although mm. Jeannie can be arrogant, at times she can actually be good in the TV series. The setting is Santa Monica, Los Angeles, California, not Chicago. Jeannie is a senior while Ferris is a junior when it's the opposite in the movie. And in this, Cameron actually falls in love a couple times. Um, although some name, casting, and setting details were changed, the viewers still got the main idea. I mean, still get the main idea of the TV series. The reason why the cast on the show was completely different from Ferris Bueller's Day Off was because Matthew Broderick, the original Ferris, was serving jail time for drunk driving around the time. So they planned to use a replacement for a while until Broderick got out, but the show was canceled within a year. I don't know if that's true or not, but Uh. hey, I know he was in jail. This was one of the main reasons why many people didn't like it. Another complaint was how uh, Charlie Schlatter played Ferris as more cocky and snarkier than Matthew Broderick's Ferris. Mm -hmm. It was beaten by its rival show, Parker Lewis Can't Lose. Um, The characters in both the movie and the TV show are in all 13 episodes. Okay, that's some uh, little bit of uh, things. I do know, you know... um, Matthew Broderick actually did go to jail for drunk driving. He uh, he, he was at the time um, I'm trying to remember if, when this happened exactly, but I think he was actually dating Jennifer Grey at the time, who played his sister in Ferris Bueller. Mm-hmm. And um, they were in a car accident together, which ended up killing somebody. So technically, Matthew, yeah. Matthew Broderick is a murderer. Whoa! Yeah, weren't they in Ireland? I think so. Um, yeah. Was it? I, I didn't know it was drunk. I thought he was like just driving on the wrong side of the road or some shit. I don't know. Maybe I mean, the, the thing is that this this uh, page that I got that information from was a Ferris Bueller fan page. So. Oh wow. I don't know. It was like a, a Fer- Ferris Bueller wiki. Um. Yeah. That's probably right then. Uh, wow. Yeah. But anyways, that's for another episode when we talk about Matthew Broderick. Being the murderer. <laughs> as well as Brandy. But, mm-hmm. well, technically both for the same reason. Do you want me to check, read some uh, reviews here, Matt? Yeah. Okay. Alright, here is one from 2002 from Preppy3. Maybe it was Zach Morris. What do you think? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. As uh, some November 26, 2002. Here we go. Um, well, I liked it. Okay, this was not up to the original movie, which was great. But how could it be? For what it was, a TV series, it was pretty good. I thought Schlatter was dead on as Ferris. His talking to the audience was well done. I laughed out loud when he took a chainsaw to a cardboard cutout of Matthew Broderick from the film. And I thought Jennifer Aniston was perfect as his obnoxious sister. (laughs) I seem to be alone in liking this, but I think people are comparing it way too much to the movie. There's no way any TV series could measure up to that. Taking it on its own, I thought it was a fun TV series. (laughs) Okay, here's another one from February 9th of 2000 from Mr. Six. Don't bother to save this, Ferris. The road to you-know-where is paved with good intentions. And I'm sure (laughs) there are a lot of producers, directors, and so forth who are headed that way after seeing the primetime terror that they have wrought here. Ferris Bueller is a TV version of the everyday high school life of the lead character from John Hughes' brilliant movie, Ferris Bueller Day, Bueller's Day Off. And while the basic idea is good, everything else is completely done wrong. Schlatter is a lot of the problem. Though he looks appropriately young, he just seems too cocky, too arrogant, and too smug as Ferris to appeal to the same way as Matthew Broderick did. 
He manages to begin the ship sinking early. Not <laughs> much better are Aniston as his sister, really as Ed Rooney, and not even the actors that play his parents, girlfriend, or best pal Cameron Fry make as much of an impression as their counterparts did on film. And then there were the scripts. Not half as inventive as the movie, not even cameos by whomever happened to be on the NBC studio backlot that day make much of a difference. No, even go good direction by Bixby, Lynn, etc. helps. In the end, Ferris Bueller's series didn't even last 13 episodes. Um, what do you know? Looks like Ed Rooney got his revenge after all. No stars. <laughs> Hardly worth thinking about. Unless you just want to get a headache. Here's another one. <laughs> From August 24th of 2019. So just a couple years ago. One out of <laughs> ten. Sad indeed. This is by Bench Seat. I lasted five minutes. Don't bother with this pathetic attempt to capitalize on the film's success. That's the whole review. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Yeah, so, I don't know. What did you think of the show, Matt? Would you, you... You said you want to try to continue watching the other episodes, right? Yeah, I'm going to give it a chance, but um, I did not like this no, pilot at all. It's... it's no. It, it appropriately fits our, our title of Pilot Error, because I don't think it's a good introduction <laughs> to this show. Um, I don't know if the show gets better, because I can't remember, honestly. But um, hopefully it does. Maybe we'll do a, uh, you know, a re-review of this later, after we watch more of the episodes. Um, if you want us to, uh, message me at mike at cullenpark.com. Um, go to our Facebook uh, group, um, All Too Real 2 podcast group, and let us know there. Um, we got a bunch of uh, suggestions of things that we can cover in the future. We are going to look into those and maybe cover some of those things that you guys suggested to us online. And I thank you for that as well, anybody that's listening um, that suggested things. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I appreciate it. Um, anything else you want us to um, cover or anything, just let us know. Um, so uh, any last thoughts here, Matt, before we wrap things up? Uh, just, you know, um, make sure that, you know, you take a look around every once in a while. <laughs> I totally butchered that quote. <laughs> uh, life, life moves pretty fast. If you don't take a look around and, ah, damn it, whatever. You know, you know, you know the thing. If you don't, um, if you don't look around once in a while, you might miss it. Yeah. Which, by the way, he's like, I don't remember saying that. Well, yeah, you don't because you said it two years in the future. And you haven't said it yet. So, um, of course, you wouldn't remember that. Yeah, he says that. that in a future episode that we haven't watched yet. So. Oh, okay. <laughs> where, there you uh, go. Where, yeah. where Barbara Bush is quoting it at a commencement speech. Yeah. Yeah. yeah exactly. God, it's so meta. Wow. I mean, mm -hmm. really, like, they just did not know what they were doing with all this. Like, man, like, anyway, so, like, I know what you're going to say. You're going to say wear a mask. Then you're going to say something else. Um I just have one point to that. Go the ahead. The reason why I don't, I don't want to take your line from you, but the oh no, go why, ahead, take it, take it. <laughs> okay. You you always say wear a ma be be good to each other, wear a mask, wear a condom. The reason why I brought that up right now is because I saw a video earlier from the Young Turks where a Republican congressman don't know if he's a senator or whatever congressman you know talking about how you know. The, Wearing masks are pointless, even a like, full year into the pandemic, still, still fighting this mask thing. And they're like, nobody wore, nobody wore masks during, uh, during the AIDS, um, epidemic. And no, you know, like, so there you go. Like, like we were saying, a condom's kind of like a mask for, you know, that member of your body. So it, it's all coming together, Mike, you know, um, uh, well, that, that that phrase was too. That one phrase so, was unintentionally bad, right there. But uh, anyway, so, um, so 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 this congressperson is either implying that the only way you can get COVID is if you have sex with someone, or he's implying that you can get AIDS what? 
by just breathing the air of somebody with AIDS. Well, no, he's saying that we didn't wear masks when... And, oh, no, and, I know what you're saying. You know, very few people... But what yeah. I'm saying is that, so therefore, that, that, that... But but there he's kind of implying that, that you know, that we didn't have to then, so we shouldn't have to now. So what he's implying right. is that if science is right, which it, which he doesn't believe it is... Right. That, you know... But, but it doesn't make any sense. All I'm saying is that wearing a condom is what you do when you yeah. don't want to, you know, get AIDS or an STD of some sort. But, right. you know, wearing a mask yeah. is for an airborne disease, you fucking dolt. <laughs> exactly. So, that's, so like, as I was watching that, I was literally thinking of your, your catchphrase, wear a mask, yeah. wear a condom. I'm like, well, there you go. <laughs> Just put yourself in a fucking bubble, people. No, oh, wait, no, yep. don't do that. Don't, don't, no. Yep, we're in into one year and two days into the pandemic. Yep. And we're still having a fucking mask argument. It's like... Uh-huh. <sighs> well, it's like just yep. the other day on, on, on Facebook, on you know, they have your memories on Facebook. I had mm-hmm. one come up that said, uh, said, said believe... Don't believe memes, believe scientists and doctors. Yep. It still applies, people. Wear a fucking yep. mask. Yep. Yep. Actually, it's a year and four days, I think. Um, yeah, well, whatever it is, by the time this airs, it'll be even later. Yeah. I mean, go out there, yeah. you know, see if you can get a, get a, get a vaccine. And, you know, don't believe the hype on anti-vaxxer bullshit either. That's that's another thing that pisses oh, yeah. me off because some people close to me are starting to believe yeah. that shit, and I am like, they're like the same people that believe you should get a flu shot every year, even are starting to believe that right. there's something wrong with this vaccine. They're not even anti vaxxers they're anti this yeah. vaccine, and they they I don't know it. There there is no chip yeah. in it. There is no you know, and people are like thinking that you're gonna die if you get the get the thing because a couple people had uh, adverse reactions to it, but they would have adverse reactions to it regardless. So, right. It's not everybody. It's like, guys, 525,000 people in this country alone have died from this. Yeah. Okay? Like, I'm sorry, like, if one person dies from a vaccine, that's tragic. I'm sorry, it's terrible. But... I'll take one over five hundred twenty-five thousand. I'm just saying. I'm not. The, I'm not the greatest at math, but I'm pretty sure one is less than five hundred thousand. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe but, it's a I mean, new form the, of math that's different. The the logic here is the fact. Okay, so I am allergic to onions. Mm. So then, by that logic, no one should eat onions. Yeah. I guess. That's the same logic I mean, they have here when it comes to this vaccine, that, you know, some people right. might be allergic to the vaccine, so then nobody should take the vaccine. Right. And you know you know who would wear a mask is the viewers! Yes, he would. I believe he would talk right directly to the camera. Yeah. He probably still is. You know, I think Ferris is living out in Santa Monica right now to this very day, talking to a camera that's not even there. He's, yep. he's living in his parents' it basement. <laughs> or but still in his bedroom. Everyone in his family is on. It's just him now. Yeah. Yep. Just, <laughs> Jeannie's and off married with some kids. Cameron is off married with some kids. Sloan is off being a professional ballet dancer. Mr. Right. Rooney, Mr. Rooney became a billionaire. That's just my theory. You know, this is how I think it's going to all end. And that, that's how the show would yeah. have ended if it, if it lasted the uh, 10 years it deserved to last. And, um... Yeah. Or maybe 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 it should still be on the air. Maybe it should have, you know, been, you know, like a 30-year television franchise. And, uh... 30, yeah. 30-plus 30. 30 years. And, um, should still be on the air. Yeah. Yep. Ferris, I would I would watch thirty seasons of this show if I was forced to, um, for money, yeah, like a lot of money actually, and put put in and, that, uh, like we're talking in the billions, put in one of those devices like like Alex and um, A Clockwork Orange where they open up your eyes and make you watch stuff. Oh 
god yeah 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 yeah, yeah that yeah. was yeah do that with but with this show yeah and then well wait a minute though no, because that was oh yeah never mind that was to try to brainwash him into mm-hmm. like becoming like a non-sociopath but yeah. it didn't really work uh, I mean, maybe they should have made him watch yeah. first bueller um anyways yeah. um so <laughs> I guess that's all we got to say here about this brilliant television show. Um, yeah. Glove compartments. Here's another. Here's here's another thing. Okay, wear a mask. If you're on yes. a motorcycle, wear some gloves. Yeah. I just learned today why people wear gloves when they're driving. Yeah. That's why you need driving gloves. You see, if you don't yeah. have a hard top, you know, if you got like a got like a convertible or something, wear. Yep. Wear some gloves. And wear a, wear a mask. Yeah. Okay. And a condom. And a condom. Yep. Bye bye. Thanks for listening to All Too Real Two podcast, a Cullen Park production, produced and edited by Michael E. Cullen II. Music by Matthew Hawes. Subscribe and share the show. Visit us at CullenPark.com.